Well, it's Comfort Food Saturday, just like we said in the promo. What I have here is some roast beef that I, uh, I did this yesterday, and I'm gonna tell you how I did this. Um, what we're making today is a hot beef casserole, and I posted this recipe before, but I change it up just a little bit and do it a little different, so we're just gonna get started with it. So here's our roast beef, and I'm gonna tell you how I did this, because this is a very important part. So yesterday, I, I used a chuck roast and it was five pounds and that's about the size you want for this. Now I'm making a little smaller portion today because my boy majority is coming later and this is what they requested to have for supper tonight is hot beef casserole. They love that and so I thought, well, I'll just share the recipe with you guys since I got to do it anyway. So I'm making a little smaller portion here, but it makes a nine by 13 pan. So this is what I did yesterday. So you put your beef roast into a pan. You can do it in a crock pot too. I do mine in the oven. So um, just put a roast, five pound roast in a pan, and then you're going to sprinkle on um, this Good Seasons Italian salad dressing mix. You can get this in the salad dressing aisle. Just one packet of this. And then you're gonna use two packages of the au jus gravy mix. So you just sprinkle that on your beef roast and then you put a 32 ounce beef broth and then you add enough water to cover the roast. And then you just put it in the oven, 350 oven, go probably, oh, an hour and a half, probably at 350, then lower your heat to 300 to render it out. And just keep checking it and when that is fork tender, then it's done and just take it out. Now what happens with this is when you add all this stuff to your beef roast and it totally renders out, it just makes the gravy. So when you take it out, you, you don't have to do anything else to it. It cooks down and it's, it's just the gravy. So that's what makes it really easy. And this is what the gravy looks like. It's the right thickness and you just end up with your gravy. So, okay. Now, this is what you do first. You're gonna need some baguette bread. And you can pick this up at the store too. And you wanna slice it. Just slice some baguette bread, probably about half inch thick, three eighths inch thick. And then just toast it a little bit in the oven. So then you're gonna end up with this. And this is what goes in our casserole dish first, is our baguette bread toast. So you just wanna put those in the bottom. And you guys, I have another pan of bread rolls in the oven and it smells amazing in here. I got my timer on so I don't ruin them. So you just wanna make enough of your bread toast to cover the bottom of your pan. And then the next thing that you do is you add your roast beef. So you just wanna put a layer of the roast beef on top of the bread toast. Get that in there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some mashed potatoes. So you just spread that out. So you have your bread toast and some really delicious roast beef. So tender. All right, so I'm gonna move my uh, potatoes over here. Now, I already cooked these on the stove, boiled them up and steamed them off so they are good to go. And we're just gonna go ahead and mash these. Um, everybody mashes potatoes differently. I'm just gonna use a hand mixer today. And um, these are just boiled potatoes. And then um, I add my melted butter first. You always wanna add your butter and your cream or milk, whatever you add to it. Make sure that those are heated up a little bit. And always add your butter first because that's what binds the starch and you won't end up with like gluey potatoes. You know how sometimes potatoes can just get like super um, gluey? If you add your butter first, then that won't happen. So I'm just gonna give these a little toss, kinda calm down the starch there. I'm gonna go ahead and just give them a mix. Now I had my salt and pepper in there too. So mashed potatoes is not rocket science, but there are a few little tips about mashed potatoes. Okay, and 
that's good enough on that. Now this is just a little heavy cream and you can use milk too. I had cream on hand I'm trying to use up and I don't add a lot either. Just add, um, add a little bit. But you guys know how to make mashed potatoes, so. <laughs> okay, and that's good. You never want to um, beat your potatoes too long because they will get gluey and they won't be fluffy. So, you know, just uh, just work with them a little bit. Okay, so now we have our mash, and then that's what goes on next. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. See, look how nice and fluffy those are. And this is definitely a comfort food. My kid, all of my kids love this, the grandkids too. And uh, so my oldest son is coming with his three boys tonight, and um, his wife is out of town on a trip and when the wife's gone, they come back to mama. <laughs> for food anyway. So he's coming over for supper. And this is his favorite. So. Okay. Then I just kind of make some swirls on there. And, um, because I want my gravy to get kind of stuck in those. So let me get all those mashed taters on there. Okay. All right, now, so this is your mashed potato on there. Like I say, I kind of make some divots in there. Because then we're gonna add our gravy. Okay, so here's our gravy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that. So then you just put your gravy, and see, look at that, how it just turns out perfect. And boy, you guys, does this have a great flavor. This um, adds, it mixes with all the beef uh, drippings and just turns out awesome. And then I serve this with a little gravy on the side too, in case somebody wants to add a little more. All right, then you just put the gravy on the top and then I put a little bit of um, Parmesan cheese on mine on the top. And then just stick this in the oven for about 10 minutes at 350, just to give your, your cheese a little melt. Sometimes it just melts right on there anyway. So, oh, there's my timer. I have another pan of rolls in the oven. So I'm just gonna cancel that out. Let's give them a little check here. Okay, they're not hurting, so we'll, we'll, I think we'll be fine on those. And then I just put a little parsley it's always good to add a little parsley. So then that would be your dish right there. Um, it's really easy to go together, especially if you do your beef the day before. And I guarantee you it's a crowd pleaser. And I baked up some rolls today. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate some of this up just so you can kinda see how this goes here. But it smells so good in here. It's just wonderful. It's a really rainy day here today and so this is gonna be perfect for today. So that's what it's gonna be like. And then, like I say, I pass a little more gravy around if anybody wants more gravy. And then I made some green beans, so I'm gonna put a few of those on there. I did some fresh green beans yesterday with some ham. So I'll put a few of those on there. And then we just took these out of the oven our bull bear bread biscuits. And I will post the recipe for you new followers. This is in one of our cookbooks, but um, they just came out of the oven. <laughs> so this is the way I like them the best, right out of the oven. So I'm gonna put a little butter. Let's see our biscuits here, they always turn out great. Especially with a little butter. I'm gonna put a little black raspberry jam on there. And this would be lunch for me right here. I would just be happy with this. A little better. These are nice and warm too. And then that's what we're gonna serve tonight. We're gonna have our hot beef casserole with some fresh cooked green beans with ham and our bread rolls. And I just think it looks pretty delicious. 
I'm gonna give just a little bit of try here on this. Mm. Oh boy, it's so good. I just gotta try this too. This is my favorite. Comfort Food Saturday. You gotta make this casserole, it's delicious.